Hello, boys and girls. Um, you need to make sure you've got a pen and a pencil and something to write on and write one to seven on that bit of paper. You can have a title of radiation or activity. And we're going to go to this site to do some rapid recall questions. Okay, so I pause the video until you get yourself a pen and paper and um, written one to seven on it. Okay, so this is a brilliant website. It's got loads and loads and loads of questions about um, your GCC physics. You can also change it to um, biology. The chemistry is not there yet. There is some LXO chemistry, our old exam board, but um, it's good for the AQA physics. Now, some of the questions um, might have a typo in them. They're all perfect, but generally they're pretty good. So this would be a really, really good revision tool when it comes to your exams. So your first job, I want you to pause the video and I want you to try and answer these seven questions. Take about Oh, take about five, no more than five minutes. Okay, so I pause the video here. Okay, so answer time. If you haven't paused the video to do the, answer, the questions, pause it now and do the questions. So here, what type of energy is found in bonds between substances? Bonds between substances. Okay, bonds between substances will be chemical, chemical energy. So there's no answer for that one. So it's still a little bit buggy. I think they're working out the, the, um, the, the bugs in it, but It'll be chemical energy. What are some of the advantages of biofuels? What are some of the advantages of solar power? What are some of the advantages of wave power? They're all renewable, so they don't produce, okay, they're carbon neutral. They don't give out carbon dioxide. They're reliable. Um, some of them are reliable anyway. Um, disadvantage of wind power, unreliable and expensive to construct. Um, what's the unit's velocity? Velocity is meters per second, the one you need to know. Or you can have m slash s. And a rock at the top of a hill has a store of gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. You can have GPE if you want. And what are some advantages of solar power and wave power? We've already done that one. Carbon, no carbon dioxide produced. Now, it's a really good revision tool. All you need to do to get different answers and different questions, sorry, is just put the click the little... Um, oh, I can, oh, I can point to it. The little uh, randomised button and you'll get all these different questions and you can change the topic by going to waves and you get different questions here really really good revision tool okay so this week we're carrying on with the um, atomic structure unit and we're looking at radiation so last time we looked at three types of radiation and some of their properties this week we're looking at how that process occurs okay so radiation so the first thing we need to talk about is how do we detect it how do we find out if there's radiation present or radiation has been given off by an isotope? And we use this machine or a machine that looks like this. This is a Geiger Muller tube. So Geiger, who you should remember the name, okay, from our first weeks. So he was one of the ones who worked on the gold leaf experiment. So he and Muller designed this detector, okay, and it detects um, radioactive particles, okay, and it works quite cleverly. So here's some alpha particles, two protons two neutrons. And when another particle comes along here and it goes inside the tube, this tube is filled with a gas and this gas is easily ionized. So when this alpha particle hits the gas, it will ionize it, it will turn it into a charged particle and this charged particle will collide with the wall and it will detect that as like a flow of current and that will be detected, it will be transferred by the electronics inside the box into a counts per second, how many alpha particles hit that gas in a second. Okay, so it counts. What it's doing is counting how much radiation is present, and it can detect the beta particles just as well. Okay, depending on the machine, some of them can detect um, gamma rays, but they're more designed to detect the particles. Now, you need to know what this counts per second is, what this word activity is. You need to know this definition. Okay, the rate at which a radioisotope decays is the activity. And one decay in one second is one BQ Becquerel. Okay, and it's measured with a Geiger Miller tube. You need to know these two things. So you need to put down activity and you need to put copy these sentences and you need to put it in a big box and highlight it and put some stars and rainbows and sparkles around it and say, I need to know this because you need to know it. If you know it, you'll get marks in the exam. Okay, and the easy marks is just remembering something. Okay, so get that into notes. Pause the video here while you get that down. Okay, so moving on. So that's what activity is. That's what what that process is, measuring how many radioactive things happen in a second. Okay, so 
the next thing we need to think about is, so, we know how to measure when radiation takes place, but when will they decay? When will it give out radiation? How quickly will that happen? And that will depend on the isotope. Some isotopes will have a greater activity than others. Okay, and the process, I think, is a little bit confusing. So we're going to do an activity um, to hopefully help you understand it. Okay, now, as a little bit of a model, we're going to look at some coins. Okay, these coins are going to represent isotopes in a minute, radioisotopes. So if I tossed a coin up in the air, what's the chance that it would land with a head or a tails? Okay, it's half, it's 50%. If I did 100 times, I'd get 50 heads and 50 tails. About. I might get 49 tails. I might get 48 tails. Okay. Um, but it'll be about 50-50. And the more times I toss that coin, the closer it'll get to being exactly 50. Okay. Because it's random. I know that the two possibilities is a heads or a tails. Okay. That's, that's, that's what could happen. That's the outcome that could happen. And I can, I can say it's either going to be heads or it's going to be tails, but I don't know which it's going to be until it's happened. I don't know what, what's going to happen. Okay. Because it's random. And radiation is a random process. It behaves quite similar to these coins. Okay. So if I have a group of coins, so let's say I've got 12 coins and I threw them all up in the air, I know that probably about six of them will end up tails and six of them will end up heads but I will never know which of them it will be I don't know which, I don't know if this one is going to be a tails or a heads I don't know if this one's going to be a tail or a heads I don't know okay it's random okay it might end up like this or I've got six tails and six heads and it happens to be that these three here and these two and this one will be a heads and the rest of them are tails it might be that it might look like this okay again I've got six and six okay but this time it's different it's random Okay, it might be when I toss them up, I get seven heads. Okay, and only four tails. Right, one, two, three, four, five tails. Okay, I don't know which is going to end up heads and which is going to end up tails. And this is sort of like, it's a good model for an atom. If it ends up tails, that means that my atom has decayed and it's given out an alpha particle, or it's given out a beta particle. It's changed into a new element. It was the heads element and now it's the tails element. It's decayed. It's given out that radiation. Okay, now we can we can use that random process to discuss this concept. So this is new. This thing is new. Half life. Half life is a is a measure of the drop in activity from an from a from an isotope, and it's got a specific definition that you need to know. Now, when we looked at um, stopping distances in the forces topic we were really specific in how you were to go about answering the question define what the what the um the thinking distance is and your teachers drummed into your heads the thinking distance is the distance traveled while and you always start with that the distance traveled for half-life it's a similar thing but you've got to go with the time it takes it's a measure of time how long something happens for the time it takes for the activity to drop by a half is the half-life. And we're going to go and we're going to do a little investigation to, to find out where that comes from and how we can measure it and how we can determine it and what we can use it for. But you need to know the definition first. The time it takes for the activity to drop by a half. You could also remember it as the time it takes for the mass of the radioisotope to drop by a, by a half, not my half. The time it takes for the number of decays in a second to drop by a half. The time it takes for half of the radioisotopes to decay. So you have to start with the time it takes and you have to have the idea of a half in there. So pause the video here and get this third definition down with some sparkles and rainbows and highlights and underlines and boxed because you need to know it. It's really important. Okay, because you can be asked to write it down and you'll be asked to use it to get other questions. Okay, so pause the video here and get that really important uh, definition down. Okay, so next, here's what we're doing to try and understand where it comes from and what it means. Okay, you need to, you get some skills or get some M&Ms or get some coins or you can make your own tokens. Okay, I use skills because they're a tasty treat when you finish. Okay, 
Um, I don't know why I use crispy M and M picture here because crispy M and Ms I think are the worst of the M and Ms, but whatever. Um, you can use coins or you can make your own token. So just get some paper, scrap paper, cut up a little square and put a tick and a cross on it. Okay, and you're going to be using these to model an atom that's radioactive, to model the chance of some of those particles decaying and giving out radiation. So you're going to need a table where you're going to put your results, where you're going to have the roll number. You need at least six, probably maybe 10, 10 or 12 maybe, but at least six. And you want to count the number of your um, starting tokens. So have more than 10, have less than 50. More than 10, you'll get better results. Less than 50, it makes the counting quicker and easy. Because you don't want to have a thousand bits of skittles, which would be tasty to eat, maybe not so good for you, but it'll take ages to count. So less than 50. 50 is probably even too many. Um, decide what it means for your token to decay. So if it's a skittle and it lands S up, that can mean it decays. If it's a token and it's got a smiley face on one side and blank on the other side, when it's smiley face, it means it's decayed. So decide what it means for your token to decay. Um, record your results. Remember, you need to have the start number here. And then you want to sketch a graph of the result. And then we're going to use the graph to find the half-life. OK, now next is going to be me doing an experiment using Skittles just to show you what I did and how to actually go about it. You can model your experiment like that. OK, we are going to come to how to um, to find the half-life on the graph after my little experiment. So if you can't do that yet, don't stress about it, wait. OK, sketching of the graph, OK, it's a curved shape. OK, it's a curve and it's quite tricky to sketch that graph. And we talk about that after my little experiment. OK, so here's me doing my experiment with some skills. Okay, so, I didn't eat them really, not all of them at once, too many skills. Now, hopefully you can 
replicate my experiment with your own tokens, with your own skills or eminence, and you can fill out your own table and start to sketch it. Okay, so if you want to do that now, here's a good place to pause the video so you can start to do that experiment. Okay, so your graph is going to look like this. If you've done it properly, it will look something like this. It might be a little bit wiggly and a bit noisy, but it's going to have that shape. A half-life graph always has this shape by its nature. Your scale here, okay, and your scale here might be different, but the shape of the graph is always going to be this curve. Now, if you noticed in the video, when I was sketching my curve, I turned my whiteboard around. Okay, do that. It's easier to draw that curve with your elbow on the table moving it rather than the right way around. Okay, it takes practice to get good at drawing those curves. I've done them loads, so I find them easy, but it's only because I've done loads and loads and loads and loads of them. Okay, you'll get it better. Okay, it also helps to have a really sharp pencil to draw it with. Um, don't do it in pen. Don't do it in pen. Because if you do it in pen and you do it in the exam, you can't redo it. And you can ruin the graph and it makes it much harder to, to then use the graph to get numbers and answers from. Okay, but this is my set of results. Now, your results, some of you might not have any graph paper, some of you might have some graph paper, some of you might have access to a, to Excel and you can plot it in Excel. It's difficult to plot a line of best fit in Excel like this. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, but a sketch graph is fine. So long as you're, you know, you, you can sketch that graph, that's okay as well, doing on a piece of paper, doing like I did, where I'm just not quite, not accurately kind of guesstimating where those positions could be, that's fine. So long as it's got this kind of shape. OK, so we need to figure out how can we use this to find out what the half-life is. OK, and I want you to look at the video and look at the extra little bits of arrows that I've put in. and Think about why did I place them in those particular positions? OK, so um, we need to start with the, t the, with the initial number. We just start with... What's my initial activity? What's the initial number of skills? So this is 41, and we go to half of that. Because remember, we're looking about half-lives. We're thinking at how long it takes for the activity to drop by a half. So what's half of 41? It's about 21, 21 a bit. Uh, 20 and a bit, sorry. Okay, so we go down to half of 20, uh, half of 41. And we go along to the graph, and then we move down. Okay, so this is just under 1 for my graph. And we can do the same thing. So after 20.5, okay, we go half of that, it's just above 10. We go along, we go down, and we look at this time. And it's about one roll. And every time we drop by a half, it's about one roll. So the half-life for Skittles, and for M&Ms, and for coins, and for tokens, is one. One roll is the half-life. How long it takes you to roll them? Okay. And we can, we can use this same technique to look at real half-lifes or real isotopes. So this is iodine, is an, an isotope of iodine, I've forgotten the number yet. And it's got its activity at the side, so the, so the amount of radiation emitted per second. And it's got the time that we're using a Geiger counter on this isotope. OK, and we're looking at how that activity changes. It's going lower and lower as it decays, OK, as more of the isotope is transformed Okay, and gives out radiation, there's less of it to give out radiation, so the activity drops. And we want to find out how quickly it drops. So we look at the activity, we look at the half-life. Now we're starting at 100, we want to go half of 100, half of 100 is 50. So we can draw a line from 50, all the way to where the graph is, and then down. Okay, and this green line that goes down towards the time goes, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hours. So the half-life of this iodine-135 is about seven hours. It takes seven hours for the activity to drop by a half. And we could do it again. So half of 50 is 25, so we could do a green line across here, hits the line, and comes down here, and it's about seven hours. It will always be seven hours. Okay, so your last job of this week's work is to try and calculate the half-life from these three samples that I'm going to show you. Now I've attached these graphs in class chat, so it might be easier to open them up that way rather than using the YouTube screen, but it's up to you. 
I'm going to give you a good bit of leeway in terms of the answer, but um, I'll look through these three graphs and try and work out what the half-life is for these three, and then I'm going to go through the answers. Okay, so this is the first one. So you can pause the video here, or you can go to the class charts and download the pictures and do them, and then come back to the YouTube. It's, it's up to you. So this is the first one, and this is the second one, sample B. Notice how the shape is the same. And this is the third one, sample C. Notice how the shape is the same. Okay, so pause the video while you're working out what the half-life is for these three samples. Okay, so hopefully you've given that a go, and here is how I have done it. So first, we find out what's the starting value. It's 100. Okay, half of 100 is 50. We go along from 50. We go down when it hits the graph, and it hits about here. So that is about 10 seconds. Okay, it's about halfway between 0 and 20. Now, because it's, um, it's a little bit harder, I'll give you the mark for anywhere as low as, maybe as low as 8 and as high as 12, 13 seconds. Okay, but we find the initial value, 100. We find what half of that is, 50. We go along, we go down. And the same method for the next one. The initial value is 200,000. Wait, 20,000. Can't read numbers. 20,000. Initial value is 20,000. Half of 20,000 is 10,000. We go along, move down, and the value will be 60 seconds. Okay, 20, 40, 60. And I'll give the mark anywhere from, oh, above 40 and below 80. Okay, but the answer is 60 seconds. And sample C, this one we started 100,000. Half of 100,000 is 50,000. We move along, we go down, and this time the answer is about 60,000 years. Okay, I'll give anywhere from 40,000 to 80,000 years. Okay, and that's the first part of how we can calculate half-lives. Now, next week's work is going to be, um, it's still going to be on half-life. It's going to be using it to determine ages, thinking about carbon dating. So you can look ahead if you want. Um, but for now, well done. I hope you're doing very well at home. I hope those of you who are going into school are getting lots of work out of it. Take care and goodbye.